Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about something a little more serious. It's a huge part of my testimony. It has to do with my body image and lack of self-confidence and my eating disorder. Thank you guys in advance for watching. I really appreciate y'all and if you decide not to watch the whole thing, just know the main point of this is just to be vulnerable and share a huge part of my story so that way others can share theirs and we can just love each other, support each other, and help each other seek the help that we need. Anyway, so growing up I wasn't the skinniest or anything like that, but it did lead to major comparison, rejection being rejected, like having memories from my earliest rejections in like first and sixth grade. It's just difficult, especially when you're not completely 100% confident in your own skin and your body. The summer before my junior year in high school, I lost 25 pounds. I kind of blocked out that summer. All I remember was eating the same three meals every day, going on long tiring runs and if you know me I hate running it's just it was like a forceful if I overate or if I didn't eat well enough in my opinion then I would push myself to over exercise like a ridiculous amount I started using an app called lose it I would let myself have about 1100 calories a day but I would freak out if I ate you know 35 calories over now I'm realizing, okay, that's like a strawberry. I would freak out about the smallest things like that. For me, even when I lost all that weight and I would hear compliments and people telling me, you look so good, you lost so much weight, oh my gosh, that still wasn't satisfying to me. I still struggled with my body and the parts of my body that weren't completely flat or toned. Just hating on my body, like I remember hating my toes and hating my eyes and my hair you know it was just like the things that you can't control in college i didn't really gain the freshman 15 but i was struggling to have motivation i was just super strict on myself with under eating overeating exercise and it was just this constant cycle i started struggling more with binge eating due to depression and anxiety i was severely homesick. I don't really remember the first time that I forced myself to throw up, but I remember December of 2017. It was the week before New Year's and I forced myself to throw up every single day and I had told myself that I was gonna stop when the New Year started. But my boyfriend at the time, he was like, that's not healthy, Kayla. You need to stop now. And so I did. But that was after like five days of just throwing up and feeling lousy in my own skin. But after that, even though I had stopped purging, I would still avoid mirrors. Or if I did look at myself in a mirror, I would cry endlessly because I just hated my body so much. I was super depressed and anxious and I would say that was like my first really really low point. In the spring, binging and purging became more frequent. I don't remember when or how often really I would do it. I think I just blocked that memory out of my mind. I would go out to social events, whether it was Chi Alpha or eating out after or just hanging out with friends and all the normal things. and. I would go home and throw up after and I just felt like I was two different people. You would see fun social Kayla who's eating without thought and then I would go home and force myself to throw up and it just felt like I was in this darkness that I felt like I was screaming on the inside but I wasn't saying anything on the outside and I knew that I had the best support system so that if I were to tell anyone they would be there for me and um, they would help me through it but I just didn't want to share really with anyone. I remember watching the Demi Lovato documentary and she talked about her eating disorder. I was like no I do not have an eating disorder but I could relate to so many of the things that she was saying. So I did some research and there was like this checklist or something and it was like 17 things and it was like basic 
I checked off like 15 out of 17 and that to me was like, whoa, you know, like that's like not right. I was definitely the kind of person that would always be like, no, like I don't struggle with that. They struggle with that or it's not bad enough. It's not as severe as this person. I would just downplay. But so after I watched the Demi Lovato documentary, from there I did do more research, but I was in denial for probably a year. The week before Thanksgiving of 2018, I went and saw a counselor at my college. I took an assessment and it printed out this chart. Basically, it was if you're in the pink, it's like high. And if you're in the yellow, it's like a little more generalized, normal. And then in the white, it's like your struggle is non-existent there. And so in anxiety and depression i was in the yellow so it was a little more generalized but it was still there and then in the food concerns it was a hundred and so it was like way high in the pink and the counselor presented that to me i was like what so the counselor recommended eating disorder facilities eating disorder counselors or like specialists i don't know i was still in denial like leaving there but i went home for Thanksgiving and I told my parents the day before Thanksgiving of 2018 they were in shock obviously but they were and still are very supportive mom and dad I love you thank you so much wouldn't be here today without you guys but Thanksgiving I was super aware and just trying to eat about normally because Thanksgiving is the toughest holiday for me from then on, I knew that it was going to be a coming to terms with having an eating disorder year to come, which is what 2019 really was. I had a word for that year, but started off being released, then turned into free or freedom. That word really got me through 2019, and it's why I got this tattoo right here says free with a bird yeah having that word really shaped my 2019 and i knew it was going to be a time of recovery especially this past fall in spring of 2019 i was i don't even know how to describe that there were high highs and low lows um same with the summer i feel like that was difficult because i knew i was transitioning out of a time of being in school and i was going to go into the workforce and being home, I was working at a job and I'm no longer working there, but I knew like coming home, it was gonna be a time of recovery and it was something that I needed to focus on. And honestly, the stress and anxiety expectations were just overwhelming. And so I feel like I can finally breathe again. So that's a plus. I've read several, probably eight different books on eating disorders and recovery and intuitive eating and all of these things and it has been a time let me tell you but I don't want to end on all of that that was just like my background my story which was probably long as heck but what I want to end on for you whoever's watching no matter whatever you're struggling with whether it's an eating disorder depression anxiety suicide addictions whatever it is that you're struggling with I just want you to know that you're not alone as much as you feel that way. Believe me, I get it. I've done the nights alone in my room or in my bathroom just crying on the floor because I felt so alone. But please do not hesitate to reach out to someone because you were created for a purpose. Whether that's to share your story or to have a family or to make a difference in someone else's life or create a company for helping others, whatever it is that you are made to do. There's a reason that you're here. I truly believe that. Whether you believe in God or not, He loves you, He created you, and He's there to support you and guide you through whatever you're struggling with. I will say that my eating disorder was the most difficult thing, or still is the most difficult thing, let's be honest, to go through, but it has made me so much more self-aware. I'm aware of what I say, I'm aware of what I do around others, and that to me is a huge blessing because the helper in me is just like, wow, thank you God, not only for 
in a way giving me this obstacle but for helping me get through it and to make me want to make a difference in people's lives but i will say that i understand mental health issues now more than ever i felt like growing up i was always on the outside trying to help other people but couldn't relate to them in a way and now i feel like i can and even if our struggles are different i get the feeling i will say that i still have a long ways to go in recovery before i can say that i'm fully recovered but Thank God I'm not where I've been. Like, I can't remember the last time I threw up. I remember times coming close, but in those moments, I found ways to get myself out of it. And I thank Jesus for just always being my number one go-to, my friend, my comforter, my rescuer. He reminds me that I'm victorious over this. And every time I look at the cross, I just think he died for that and I don't have to do that anymore. So I hope that you can look at your issue that way. I will give you this image because when I shared this part of my testimony, it was a lot shorter, it was like five minutes. But when I shared this part of my testimony, I gave this little imagery and I wanted to share that with y'all. But just imagine there's a little child and he's standing outside of the mirror or the glass at the zoo and there's a lion behind it and the lion's prowling against the mirror and all of a sudden he goes to pounce on the child but the child can't be touched because there is a huge glass wall in the way. Just imagine yourself as that little child and God is the glass that is protecting us from the devil, the lion our eating disorder, our addiction, our anxiety, depression, whatever it may be. And he's just saying, no, you can't touch them. They are my child and I'm going to protect them no matter what. That to me is the biggest thing. Just keep your eyes up and don't get stuck looking in the past. If you are recovering, keep going. Do not stop. If you're recovered, stand on that mountain and raise your hands in praise. But if you're still in the valley, just know that there's a way out always. You do not need to feel stuck or alone. Just keep fighting and know that you're so loved. If you have any questions, comments, or you just need prayer, please message me privately on any platform. I will definitely pray with you, talk with you, love on you. I love you guys and I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye.